Cutting holes into a vehicle, trying to make it more like a home. I put in a door in a window. Put the window on the driver's side, makes it feel like it's more like taco time. Yes, the window on the driver's side makes it feel like it's more like taco time. It's a taco truck. Hey, manito, can I order a large burrito? Taco truck. Hey, manito, can I order one large burrito? Savannah, we're building a taco truck, right? A motor home? Ugh, I gotta rework the song then. Cutting holes into this vehicle so it looks like a motor home. Kinda looks like a taco truck, if I'm being honest, it looks like a taco truck. The window on the driver's side makes it feel like it's more like taco time. Cause the window on the driver's side makes it feel like it's more like taco time. I, I better just stop. Right across this country into this starlight, 12,000 miles. Turn back, do it again. No destination, it's just a journey. You were my lover and friend. Welcome to episode three. We are doing the framing and insulation for the subfloor, and we're also making Swiss cheese out of the unicell, cutting all the windows and doors in. What's happening? Oh, I was just trying to like make symbols for everything you were saying. What kind of symbol could you possibly have for subfloor? I just kind of did a floor thing. <laughs> and then I try to do like holes like Swiss cheese and like we're cutting. Oh. Anyways, welcome back. We're going to get right into it. <laughs> Episode three, here we go. First thing up this week is building out that subfloor. That means framing it out, laying down the insulation, and then the plywood right on top of that. So anytime you get to this step in the build, you have to make a couple decisions. Sometimes if it's an older vehicle, you wanna pull that floor up and examine the framing. We knew that wouldn't be an issue, but we did have to make a call on keeping the inch and a half yellow pine that was in there or pulling it. And while we would have gained a little bit of height and saved a bit of weight, we decided the amount of work to pull that up and just have to replace with three quarter inch it wasn't worth it, so we're just gonna build right on top of that and sacrifice that little bit of weight and that little bit of headroom. Something we don't have in this build is wheel wells. So framing out the floor was a really, really simple process. It was basically just a big rectangle that we were framing. We always frame out the floor with one by threes, and the first step was to go side to side with just full length boards and put all of those in front to back. We decided to put the one by threes that go the opposite direction, 16 inches on center. So 16 inches from the center of one board to the center of the other board. This is kind of just standard framing, but it also worked out for our width to just do it at this standard distance. The supports that are under the cabinets, those are a little bit bigger because you're not gonna be walking on that area. And right in the walkway and the entryway where we'll have our door, we framed out smaller, so there's more support in that area you're gonna be walking over daily. We secured all the one by threes down with really long wood screws just to make sure it's secured right into that already existing floor and nothing's gonna move around on you. We framed out the floor at the end of one of our work days and the next day Drew was out of town so it was up to me to finish this subfloor all by myself. The first step for this was to cut the sheets of insulation board 
to all of the sizes that we just made with our one by three framing. To do this, I like to go into the vehicle and draw out the grid of the floor on a piece of paper, measure each square, make sure that it's that actual measurement that you set, write everything down and label each piece. That way when I cut the insulation board, I can label it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go back in the vehicle, look at my grid and take one, put it in one, two, put it in two, three and three, and so on. Otherwise, everything gets really messy, really mixed up, and you don't know where anything goes. For this build, we decided to switch up our flooring insulation, and instead of using poly iso board like we have in the past, we chose XPS rigid foam board. XPS board is really similar to poly iso board, but it just has a higher compressive strength. So for that reason, we think it's a bit better option for the floor. Now we did frame it out with the one by threes, so it's not a really big deal, but it's really easy to get, it's really affordable. So we decided to just switch that one out for this build. The XPS board has an R value of five per inch and we went with half inch board. This is just what fits within the sandwich of our floor against the one by threes so that we can comfortably screw down the plywood on top. I think this is more than enough for the floor. Yeah, I mean, the most value you get out of insulation in these builds is definitely the ceiling and then the walls would be next and it's good to do something on the floor, but I think it's less of an issue to put like an inch, inch and a half in the floor. I think the headroom is more valuable. Absolutely. It's really simple to cut the XPS foam board. I just use a razor blade, a straight edge, a square really helps. So if you can use the square and the straight edge, you get to cut just a bunch of nice rectangles or squares, and then they pop in really easily. I did this using my chart. I just labeled each piece. Another really satisfying time lapse. Now that the insulation is in all the gaps of the framing, the last thing that we have to do is put the plywood right over the top. This is gonna be really interesting because I am the only one here to move these full sheets of plywood around. Well, Mateo is here, but I don't think he's gonna be much help with that. So all I have is me. I'm gonna have to wrangle these big sheets of plywood in place, screw them down, and then the subfloor will be complete. I guess the only thing to do is get started, so let's give it a go. We ended up choosing 19 30 seconds sheathing plywood for the subfloor. We've gone with three quarter inch in the past. We find that you need to be between about half, three quarter, and with the more rigid insulation board underneath, we felt comfortable going just a bit thinner to save a bit of weight, and it feels really solid, so we're not worried about that at all. Okay, one down, four to go. Uh.
I made all the cuts on the plywood with the skill saw and then wrangled them up into the unicell. This was difficult to do by myself. <sighs> Even cut down, plywood is, it's just kind of like a noodle sometimes. Yeah. Like it's bending and I had to get it up into the back of the unicell. It was a bit of a challenge, but I got it all in there. Like we said, really, really simple to do the subfloor in this vehicle. The only thing that I had to cut around was where the shower pan will go, uh -huh. which is a square. <laughs> so no wheel wells, no gas intake coming into the floor space. This was really simple. Yeah, just putting big rectangles in there, pretty yeah. easy. You just have to cut the last one to line up and you're good to go. As I went along, I just screwed each piece of ply down into the floor to make sure that it's secure and it's not gonna go anywhere over time. I am so warm, so tired, <laughs> tired of lifting full sheets of plywood, that's for sure. But look, I got it all done. It's not that hard. It's just knowing the steps and actually getting out here and doing the work. But once you get started, it's a really easy process, just the framing, the insulation, and then the plywood on top and you have an insulated subfloor. Just like that, it's done. Mateo, are you proud of us? Are you proud of us? You did a good job. Pata, high five. Good job, bud. <laughs> Last week we framed out the vehicle, which meant we also framed in for the windows and the door that we'll be putting in. So it was time to go cut a hole in that fiberglass and prepare for the installation. We always talk about how stressful this is and cutting holes in the vehicle, especially holes the size of these windows and doors, so stressful. I hate this day in every build. It's it is just not my favorite. It's not fun. Uh, I feel like I've been in a battle with this build. I'm cutting myself, running into things. And on top of that, the fiberglass even when you try to wear long sleeves and all that, man, unless you have a full suit, it gets on you and it itches and you get your arms bump up all red. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're supposed to wear protective stuff. So I definitely recommend at least long sleeves. Um, that didn't happen every day because it's super hot. But, but yeah, the fiberglass cutting it, not fun. In our layout, we decided on three windows, one of them being a pretty big window by our couch and a full size entry door as well. Like Drew said, when we reinforced our framing, we welded in the head and sill of the windows and same with the door. So our sizes were already there. We didn't have to do too much measuring and lining up of each of the windows and door. We already did that when we did the framing. So mostly for us this week, it was just kind of reconfirming the size placement, really just cutting the hole to the edge of the framing that was already there. Once we uh, did cut the holes, we got into that process, it was gonna be the moment of truth of, did we frame those windows accurately enough? Are they gonna fit? Are they too big? That part was pretty stressful. First, we held up the frame of the windows into the framing that we welded in place and just used a marker to kind of retrace it, double, triple check, everything was right. And then we drilled holes within the part that we were going to cut. And that's so you can stick your jigsaw blade in there to actually start making the cut. During this process, we did have to cut through some of that pre-existing hat channel that was on the walls. So it made it a little bit more difficult because you're cutting through some metal while you're trying to maintain a line or an angle. But overall, it was pretty easy, though it's so nerve wracking anytime you're cutting holes. Um, and I gotta say these windows, they do not give you a lot of margin of error. 
No. Um, after doing vent fans more than a few times and always being pretty overzealous about perfection and realizing, oh, there's a bunch of overhang here. I kind of thought it'd be like that with the windows. Man, they are so close. I wish they would just make them a little wider, at least the ones we have. Mm -hmm. It's like, you gotta be almost perfect. It's kind of frustrating. We cut the first window and realized we forgot to put masking tape or painter's tape on the outside of the vehicle. We always like to do this when cutting into fiberglass because it kind of prevents splintering on the outside from your saw blade going in and out of the fiberglass. I don't know what we were thinking. We yeah. Just, we lost our minds. <laughs> we've only done this like, what, four or five times, so. When we did the second window, we put the tape up there in the shape of the window. We kind of alternated from cutting both inside and outside of the vehicle. It was just kind of a difficult process to figure out which side was better to cut from. And the outside of this unicell body, I'm pretty sure is gel coated. Yeah. And it's a little bit touchy. We noticed that when you were cutting with the jigsaw, kind of the foot of the jigsaw would leave like a mark mm -hmm. onto the outside of the vehicle. It really is a bit sensitive. So we kind of alternated, but overall we found the best way to get it cut. Our plan of attack here, because like Drew said, there is such a small margin for error on these windows, was to cut the window small and then hold up the window and just keep trimming it back. That's what worked best for us to just make sure we weren't going way outside the area we were able to cut in. So you'd kind of trim back, hold it up, check. Trim back, hold it up and check until it popped into place. Very tedious and frustrating, especially, like I said earlier, dealing with fiberglass, which is just now going in the air. So the more you gotta do those cuts, the more of a mess you have, but yeah, without having some other completely perfect process. Um, I don't know, it seems like the way to do it, just so you don't completely ruin the window. And this is our first time cutting holes for windows and doors. We've never done it on a van. We obviously didn't have to do it on the shuttle buses. We had the opposite problem, too mm -hmm. many windows. So I think maybe just the more you do it, you kind of refine that process. Yeah, it's similar to doing a vent fan or the installation of the water heater, but just bigger and <laughs> more critical, I think. Measure and check and triple check and quadruple check and check again before you cut. So we cut the first two windows on the passenger side, which are over the kitchen. And it was time to move on to the big window on the driver's side, which is above the couch. This is a big window. This is a problem you sometimes can run into without having the actual physical product in your hand. Um, we did the framing based on the specs that are on the data sheet for the window. Problem is, they were wrong. <laughs> I was figured we were wrong. I went to check it, it wasn't quite going in. I'm like, hmm, did we frame this a bit small? Um, and we went back to the spec sheet and we went to our opening that's what it is. Then we went on the actual physical window. It was just a little bit big. There was nothing else to do but move that header. We gave it a little more wiggle room, mm -hmm. but that was pretty disappointing. Yeah, we had to go and cut those welds off, hammer that thing up, re-tack it on, re-weld it. Once we moved that header, welded it back in place, gave it a little bit more wiggle room, it popped in, no problem, and we had our Taco truck window. <laughs> Taco truck in the window. Side. Can I take your order? Oh, hi, yes. Uh, can I get the number 341, the McSloppy Saucy Burger? 
And a side of the soggy pickles. Oh, sorry, we're out of soggy pickles today. Okay, I'll have a spicy, a spicy drink. Anyone shorter than me wouldn't be able to get food at this truck. This is a really high window. You must be 6'3 to order from this window. <laughs> like a little kid. <laughs> can I get a, can I get the SpongeBob ice cream bar? And uh, is there any bomb pops in there? Please? And chili, fr chili Fritos? Congratulations, we made a food truck. Give me them chili Fritos. Let's get this window in. I'm hungry, feed me. Now that the three windows were cut, the last part of the process was to go for the door. We are so excited about this door. Ugh, I can't wait for you guys to see it. Walk through the door. Sure. Okay. Maybe the last one too. Ooh. Pretty good. That's crazy. <laughs> wow, this space feels so different. Wow. We chose the Arctic Turn Wildlands door. Now this is more of an overlanding style door and we've actually had our eye on this door for a few years now. It's really weird that we're making these mental lists yeah. <laughs> of ideal products, but when we realized that this door would be a good fit for the unicell build, we were so excited. When considering a door, we were looking at RV options, you know, the regular doors that you see on the big tow behind trailers, stuff like that. And I was looking at the construction of them and they looked so bad. I was like, you, if you just had a screwdriver in hand, you yeah. could break through that thing, no problem, in seconds. I'm pretty sure you could get through yeah. that door. And I don't know about you, but I'm not very comfortable with that. So in looking for a better option, it was clear that it was time for this Arctic Turn Wildlands door to come into our lives. Actually unpackaging the door, taking it out of the box, you can just feel how heavy this door is, like how well it is constructed. Wow, this is amazing. You have to hold it. It's this is installed. <laughs> This is made so well. Wow. Screen door is pretty cool. This is great. It's really solid. Like all the components are really solid feeling. RV doors are pretty much like the rest of the RV industry, made horribly and really expensive. So we decided to spend the money on this Arctic Turn Overland door and it does not disappoint. Look at that, all the way to all that airflow you could have. It's amazing. You don't have to open a window, you just open this and put your fans on, you're gonna be sucking so much air in. And it doesn't look terrible like all the other no, RV it looks doors. pretty cool actually. <laughs> this door has a triple deadbolt system with a high security screen door. So they claim on their website that this screen door is grizzly proof that it was developed for Africa where wild animals are a concern. And then they also say that it can keep out two-legged animals as well. So if someone comes up and tries to break into it, they can't just put something through the screen because it's kind of like a metal mesh screen. Yeah, super cool. So basically it's two doors. There's the outside door, which is solid. And then you can open that to another door, which is a security screen door. And you know, it's cool and all like knife proof, bat proof, but I want grizzly bear proof. Lion proof, sold. Next Count me in. level. All those lions <laughs> we're always running into, I definitely, you know, we need that. Um, <laughs> but it is really cool because you can leave that outside door open and keep your screen door locked, even when you're sleeping with your fans blasting and you can ventilate that place even that much more because it's a big opening. 
We're pretty excited to be able to leave that door open but have the screen door closed and Mateo won't be able to get out of it because with our shuttle bus doors, we had a Velcro screen mm. door that went on and he would just run out the screen door because it separated in the middle by magnets. <laughs> once he figured it out, it was over. So you'd have to have the bus doors closed if you didn't want him to run out. Now we'll be able to keep our front door open, keep the screen door shut, have that ventilation, but still keep him in the vehicle if need be. So pretty excited about that. I cannot wait to just start using this thing. We're pretty impressed with it already. So all the holes were cut but we did not want to finalize installation as there are other steps that need to be done. There's a lot that we have to do on the interior of this vehicle. We wanted to insulate, get some of the walls up because especially with the windows, that internal framing screws on over your walls. We just have to keep taking it in and out. Mm -hmm. So the holes are cut, the fit test is done. We know that they'll go in perfectly later, but didn't want to quite do that install yet. We don't want them to get damaged while we're doing other things. Yep, we did the fit test and it turns out Unicell is 100% that taco truck. <laughs> One last step we had to do to finish all the framework was to go around with adhesive, put that on the bar and push the fiberglass against it. It's just gonna secure everything more. We went around and did this to all the one by twos that we added to the framing. Because if you'll remember in that framing episode, the hat channel that's in there from Unicell is glued to the fiberglass. And so in some of the places there was a little bit of a gap because the fiberglass has so much movement to it. We just wanted to go around and do the same thing so there was less potential for an air gap back there when doing our insulation. And also we didn't wanna get done with the build and realize that the fiberglass rattles against the framing while we're driving. We just wanted to reduce the potential of any of those things surprising us down the line. So just a bit of construction adhesive, press it all together and let it dry. The holes are cut. We have three windows, one door, they all fit into place and the framing is glued to the fiberglass of the vehicle. That part was finished. That wraps up episode three into a box van. We cut holes for windows and doors. It looks so much different. It's a drastic change. As soon as you do that, it's starting to look like a brand new vehicle. And we're excited to keep this moving and we have a ton of projects to do. So we gotta get back to work. Episode three is already done. Time is flying and this build is moving. All right, we will see you guys in about a week.